Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, our big Culturama yearly event. We, we have, we've been doing a lot of monthly events, but this is the big one. And it is all of November, every Friday and Saturday. And for the first week, we have only, um, we have only uh, writing classes. But as we go on, we're going to be adding all sorts of arts as well, visual arts. Um, and uh, next week, there, there's a, a, a lot of them. Um, I, I want to start off just by talking about um, how to function within Culturama. First of all, um, if you can uh, turn on your, your uh, camera, you, you don't have to, but we appreciate it because it's, it's harder to teach to blank screens than it is to teach to people's faces. Um, so really appreciate if you do that. Uh, if you have issues of privacy, I understand totally. Don't, don't, don't do it, but uh, if you could, that's, it's really helpful. Um, I, uh, through the through the weekend, uh, we might be turning off your microphones at different points. Sometimes there's some ambient noise, and you just you, you're not recognize it because you're in it. Uh, but the rest of us are hearing it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, thank you, thank you all for doing that. Um, okay, so we we have people from all over the world, and I'm really excited about that. Um, we'll be we'll be. I, I want to first. I want to talk about just Zoom, and I'm about to turn on the live transcript. Um, Oh, I've got to do it in this computer. I've got two computers going for, because sometimes computers conk out, out. So you'll see my face in two different places or my name in two different places. Um, I have just uh, enabled the transcript. So if you look at the bottom, um, you, you can see that there's a place that says live transcript. If you click on that, you get, um, you get closed captioning and it's, and it's pretty good. Uh, just pl click on show subtitle and if you're like me and you're a little bit hard of hearing or if you're like somebody outside of california and my accent is confusing to you um then that that that, that works that, that'll help you um then if you look also uh, we have the share screen function you might be asked to do that sometime this weekend we if you look on the if you turn on chat some people don't feel like talking so they will chat uh which is you know totally fair and um understand that sometimes it's hard for the 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 person to see that. Uh, we're going to be trying to to share these. Um, uh, we're, anything we record, we're going to want to share on our culture on my community page. And let me show you that. Um, that is right there. And I, I've got it on the schedule right now, but I can go back and it just looks like this. And it's recordings from a lot of the different things that we've done. And it goes on farther than this. It, you just go to the next page to see that. Um, so you just click, click on any one of these and you can see there's our schedule. This is a very quick way to get in. So you don't have to go in and out of Eventbrite. And I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, copy and paste the, um, the, the website here down in the chat. Um, uh, mostly I have this open. The only reason I wouldn't have this open is, um, if, if we suddenly get a zoom bomber, uh, which we have gotten uh, and zoom bomber is just a child trying to, uh, you know, test, test his or her or their limits. Um, and so it happens every once in a while, I'll just kick them out. Um, if, if you see it happening, just try to figure out what their, their name is. Okay. And uh, you can see I just had to, to mute somebody because there's a little bit of ambient noise. Uh, okay. So uh, is, is that all I need to say, Lloyd, about um, the, fu the functionality of Zoom? I think you covered all of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, if you if you want, want to weigh in on anything um, while workshops are going on, but you you know not not comfortable speaking or or just don't feel like speaking, definitely use the chat. Um, we're we're definitely okay with that. Yeah, yeah. And the the reactions button, you can raise your hand too. Um, there there there's there's thumbs up. That's not raising your hand, but there's a raise your hand function. Oh, and, okay, and that that that'll move you over as well. Okay, great. Um, does anybody have any questions about Zoom? Okay. Okay, great. Um, so we also like to just introduce you to the idea of Culturama. And so the the Culturama, the um, the month long event is different than the, the weekend long events. And we, we like to think about it in terms of goals. Normally, Lloyd and I would be at, up on top of the stage right now and there'd be a lot of noise and we'd have music blasting and all that stuff, you know, getting everybody pumped up. It's very hard to do pumped up sorts of things in, in Zoom. 
Uh, but uh, we, we, one of the things we'd like to start with is just goals, thinking about goals. Like what, what are the top 10 things we want to accomplish over this month? Like what, what do you want to learn? How do you want to grow? What would you like to do? So what, 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 what are the goals for, for, for our month? Does anybody have one? John, I, I, I think for me, I, I think I just, you know, want to continue this work that we've been doing all year long. Um, I actually started something at last year's Culturama, and I'd like to continue that. Um, there's just always some good ideas and um, new contributors, um, teachers and students who, you know, I just get some great ideas from and and, and also just the time to write. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's always a hard thing when you're working. It's, it's hard for me to work in total isolation because, right, you, it's hard to, um, a little bit of static from somebody. You see where that's happening, Lloyd? No, I'm not saying that. Okay, it's it's really hard to write in isolation. It's it's really great to have anything that, that that'll help you uh, function with that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, and we got some stuff uh, on the side here. So Nancy is trying to do Flash Nano. Oh my gosh, that's a that is a difficult. You're going to try to do fifty thousand words of Flash? Am I correct? I just <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that's hard. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Okay, I unmuted myself. No. A flash fiction daily for 30 days. Oh, that's great. That's and if it turns out to be 50,000 words, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> well, if, you've done, if you've done one story a day and it's 50,000 words, uh, then it's no longer flash, right? It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me get that's, muted again. Goodbye. That's right, it's NaNoWriMo. I forgot, I completely forgot. Yeah, yeah, it, well, it's the worst time in the world for, for teachers to have NaNoWriMo, right? Because we're heading into finals. Um, uh, Cherie says to use extended metaphors to create a story. Yeah, that's that, that's great. Absolutely. Um, Nina says, yes, the time to write. Uh, Nina is, uh, Nazir, we have two Ninas, uh, saying to be a better writer overall. I enjoy working with prompts in a group, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and so, Nina, I don't know where you are in the world, um, but we have five o'clock our time. Every Friday, we have T. Anders Carson comes and give us prompts. Um, and it's fantastic. He's, he's a really great prompt giver, Canadian. So we extend our worldwideness. Um, and uh, but it, the problem is if if you're in Asia or the UK, that'll be in the middle of the night for you. So I don't, I don't know. yeah, yeah, it'll be ten till twelve. Yeah, I, I, it's fine. <laughs> I, I might tune in. Thank you. Hopefully, we can record that workshop, so then you can at least watch the recording and get some of the prompts. That'll be good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Right. Um, oh, and Brid says time to make to make time to write. Also, trying Flash Nano. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, oh, so we have we have fans. I think of our first uh, speaker come uh, already in. Um, our first speaker is Jude Higgins. So brilliant, brilliant Flash writer and teacher. Um, yeah, just trying to keep writing. I yeah. And Judah says I would like to learn new tips and skills from from fellow writers, and I think that that. It's, it's a little bit harder in this setting than if we actually were, were meeting. Um, sometimes, like, you, I, I have gotten more from the students than from the, the teachers, right? And uh, so if you can find a way to interact with the other teachers, uh, the other students, that's great. Viji says, just to, to try to keep writing. Yeah, that is, that is the thing, right? There's so much of our time is eaten up by, um, you know, just life. Uh, and so having just a t time a space to write, people to keep you accountable, I think is really, really important. Um, oh, Renee is saying to finish projects so I can publish. Um, Renee, uh, so I'm going to have a, a workshop on publishing basics coming up, but both, both Lloyd and I have specialized in our uh, last 20 years, and Lloyd, if I'm talking and you want me to not talk for you, just tell me, on helping other people to publish, and so come and if, if you feel 
more comfortable with one or the other. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to work with you one-on-one -on, -one on publishing stuff. Um, yeah, I just had a, a student publish a, a chapbook, a student from one of my poetry classes a couple of years ago, so. Oh, that's fantastic. Who was that? Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I'm blanking out. Ah, I've got put it on the spot. <laughs> Adriana. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so Renee, please, please help. Uh, let us help you do that. And it, it's, uh, yeah, it, we'll have to figure out what your goals are. Uh, Jane uh, says, <laughs> I'll come on in a full realistic Zoom photography in a bit, but I hope to get feedback on the work and publishing info. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if you show us your picture, we, we appreciate that. But if there's a reason not to, please don't feel re that you're required to do that. Um, uh, Cheating at Flash Nano. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. Oh, the, the, you can probably get four nano pieces, uh, four flash pieces today from um, Anders' uh, prompts, right? He, he does he does poetry prompts, but they're functional with nano as well, or flash, I mean. Uh, Betty, such a wonderful opportunity for my high school writers and artists to interact with professionals for free. Oh, that's great. Oh, do we have a lot of high school students? Uh, I've, I, sent not, out, I've sent out the um, link information to the new moderator for Spartans of the Plume at Sure High, so I'm hoping they'll be able to come on for tomorrow. I doubt it today because they're in school. Oh, okay. sure. Yeah. I, that or makes maybe sense. after school. That's great. I, I do have to make a disclaimer, though. We, we have a couple of racy subjects. We have two people who are experts in writing about sex coming from two different directions, right? One's a, one's a poet and one's our sex ed professor at Mount Sac. Um, so just uh, should be aware of that. Uh, but thank you, Betty, for bringing your students. I, I really appreciate this. I'd like to open up uh, and I like to show high school students that college isn't terrifying and unfriendly too. Right? Uh, so. Yeah, that's the other plus. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Sue says, just joining uh, in from Nova Scotia, waiting for the Jude Higgins gig. Yeah, Not, <laughs> yeah, I, I figured Sue that, yeah. And so, so you're thinking about uh, doing some flash. We have uh, flash all uh, month long. So I hope you, you, you come back and check some of those, those things out. Um, okay, fantastic. Um, uh, any other goals for anybody? anybody? Oh, oh, that's great. This is your 16th na Nano. Sue, have you like written a full novel in, in, in Nano? I've tried a couple of times. Oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're muted. We'll have to... Yeah. Um, yeah, hi. Um, I've been nanoing since 2006. On the two or three recent nanos, I actually rewrote some of the original ones. Um, three of them so far have been published. My publisher is in Oregon. Um, they are also publishing for me a, a collection of my poetry written over 20 years. That will be coming out on the 8th of December. Um, they are publishing another of my nano novels next May and um, a collection of uh, flash fictions in April 2023. I'm nearly wow. 78. I'm nearly 78. It's taken me years to reach this point. Um, but to all you youngsters out there, it's very competitive because of the internet, getting published has become more and more competitive. It might appear easier, but believe me, it is not. Um, I couldn't get a Canadian publisher. My um, voice is too British. So what do oh. I do? I found myself a publisher in Oregon, of all places. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one thing, that's one thing John always talks about uh, with our students is how there's always an audience yeah. for so your writing. Quite, right. You just have to find happy, it. Quite happy with my um, British um, terminology. Um, I negotiated that as part of the contract because I can only write what I write. Um, what I, the, the, the way I got them in the end was I researched um, a small number of publishers, uh, independent publishers who were looking for microfiction. And I had three years supply of microfictions that I'd done with ad hoc fiction. That's Jude Higgins. Yeah. So I had 150, 150 word stories. 
And I sent oh. those out to a short list of publishers who were looking for that kind of thing. And Unsolicited Press got back to me within six days and said, that's just what we're looking for, send them. And I nearly, I nearly fell off my chair. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's wonderful. I, I wasn't expecting that. And all I'd done was put together like a, a presentation pack of 25 stories, um, some marketing ideas, um, my, my writing history, which is not long, 20 years, um, since I left like a business career and started writing fiction. Um, and I love them too. I love them. I just love them. They are my publisher. That's wonderful. I won't, I won't send anything to anybody else. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Oregon has a really strong tradition now of flash fiction I publishing. Know. And we are, we are on either side. We're, we're, we're like coast to coast. And there are yeah. things very uh, similar in that part of the world to what it's like here in Nova Scotia. There are so many similarities in the sort of the way people approach culture and how they embrace culture, right? It's not to do with making money. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's nice to see you all. I, I was I was kind of waiting for Jude, and it's really nice to see you all. So, what what is this collection about? Because I I dropped in by accident. Oh oh, we're just we're we're so uh, Jude is the first of our teachers, but we have a month of of teachers, and uh, this is just us introducing ourselves and saying hi and taking whatever questions you have about the month. We're setting goals right now. We're, we're, we're doing that sort of thing. So we have, uh, I believe, something like 70 speakers coming. Um, and it's all free all, all weekend long. And if there's anything I can do to help, you just, uh, you just ask me a message, all right? If anything, all right. any of my experience can be helpful to someone else. Oh, I'm sure I'm it can. I'm more than happy to share it, OK? That's great. Well, next weekend I will be I'll be talking about publishing basics. So you could uh, come in there and share some of your experiences. That'd be great. Speaking of publishers, we have Dennis Kalachi here, who's is uh, uh, one of the publishers, our local publishers for Bamboo Dart Press. Hey, Dennis. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Um, so, does anybody have any questions about um, the month or about anything? It could be about writing in general. It could be anything. Does anybody have any kind of questions? And I'll wait for a second for people to unmute or to type. I, I don't have any right now, but I'm sure I will as it unfolds, because yeah. I always do eventually. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, always, always like, uh, usually, you know, in past call traumas, the questions has been, then things like, where's the bathroom? <laughs> um, why is your campus so big? That, uh, yeah, that, that's usually my job to <laughs> direct people to the restroom. <laughs> and our, our our campus, although uh, it, we're we're not a famous school, we're a very big school. It's sixty five thousand people, and so people are always confused as to where everything is. Uh, okay. Well, it looks like there's no questions, Lloyd. Do you have anything to to? Oh, okay. Um. Uh, Lloyd, do you have anything to add? No, uh, but you and I talked um, a little bit yesterday about um, offering some prompts. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. sorry. Yeah, absolutely. You see that? Okay. Um, and I think maybe also how to develop your own prompts, which was actually something we talked about in our last last Calturama, Calturama October. Um, but just what in the world is a prompt? Oh, no, we didn't talk. We talked about that in the club. Um, and so if you understand what a prompt is and, and what, what, what it's trying to, to do, you can sometimes develop your own prompts. And I'll give you a couple of methods for that. And, and Lloyd, you can jump in with us. But basically, a uh, prompt is similar to a uh, meditative experience. And the point of meditation is to stop the, the racing thoughts, right, that, that are, are um, keeping us from being in the moment. And a prompt helps to break those and, and, and get you back into the moment. So there's a number of ways of doing that. One of those the ways is to reach into your past. Um, and there's a danger with when other people are reaching into your past because they might be reaching into a really delicate area. Um, one of my favorite prompts to give, but it's also a little bit dangerous, is um, what's the first time that you can remember being outside by yourself? Um, and uh, 
which is not the same thing as which was what, what's the first time that you were outside by yourself? What's the first time you can remember being outside by yourself? And the reason that that's that's powerful and possibly dangerous is because something came up in your mind right now. And that something was either uh, very positive, or very negative. Right. Because there's a reason it's, it's popping up there. Um, uh, there, there, there's a reason it's, it's popping popping up in, in, in your mind. Uh, and so it could be uh, from when you were 50 or it could be from when you were three. The first time uh, I, I can, the first memory I have of being outside myself was when I was actually about three years old. Um, and I was, I, I lived in Edmonton, uh, Alberta, Canada. Uh, and we were, we were, I was outside looking at our real estate sign. And because we were moving, I was moving to this exotic place called Pittsburgh. Um, and I was freaking out about it. And so, but my parents left me outside as people used to do with their children, uh, left me outside in, in the front, just kind of by myself waiting. And so that's, it's, it's that's a, an anxiety laden memory, but it could be very positive. Lloyd, when I said that, did, did anything pop into your mind? Like the first time you can remember being outside by yourself? Um, no, but I'm thinking about it right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, not really anxiety ridden, actually. It's, a, it's a kind of a happy memory for me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's being outside uh, the apartment that I grew up in, in, in LA, um, and kind of walking around the, to the back of the, of the apartment complex. And um, people were, had hang their, uh, hung their clothes to dry. Mm. And I was uh, kind of running in and out, just kind of playing. I think I was five, four or five just running in and out of the all the drying clothes um so yeah yeah, yeah. so that, that that's great um that's fantastic right it's it's, it's a positive memory it's it uh, these these are not going to necessarily be be bad memories these are going to be things that are impactful to us um and so you can kind of do that with any sort of any sort of memory right the, the first time i I'm, i came to this house or uh a time when i uh was in the grocery store uh, the one I'll give, give to my students, they don't think it's going to be emotional, but it turns out to be very emotional for everybody is, uh, think about a time you went to, to a restaurant that, that is why would that, well, because there are times you go to restaurants that, right. Like the normal day-to-day -day going to a restaurant thing, it's not, but that's not the one that's going to stick out in your mind. Um, the one that just popped into my mind was, uh, last time I, I, I went to, um, actually it was to the Bath Flash Fiction Festival. And I went there, went there to speak. And then afterward, I was alone by myself in London for a couple of days. And just like being alone in a restaurant was uh, re really interesting. And just kind of, I had a, a bit of a personality shift. I, I turned into a, a total introvert and I was very soft-spoken. I don't know what that was, um, but maybe that's my true personality. I don't know. Um, and it was just kind of interesting. Um, so uh, those kinds of things will, will help you do it. Um, do you have another type of prompt, Lloyd? Yeah, um, I, I, I have two, two kinds, and the other one is, is kind of hard to do like in the moment because uh, it takes a lot of prep. I teach primarily uh, poetry, uh, and a lot of my prompts for my poetry students are um, working with specific forms of poems, like sonnets, sestinas, things like that. So that takes too much time. Uh, Another prompt I like to give uh, it, uh, involves um, just being a, an observer of the world because I think that's one thing that makes uh, creative people so special is that we we notice things that other people don't pay attention to. Um, uh -huh. So one of my favorite prompts uh, that I love to write just myself uh, and also offer to offer to uh, anyone who uh, anyone who writes um, is uh, to write about someone that that. Um, that you've encountered in your life that other people tend to not notice or appreciate. Um, what is it about them that's so special that stands out that, that other people don't, that, that don't notice or appreciate? Um, that could be a poem, that could be an essay, that could be a, a work of fiction. Um, it could be a, a vignette, right? Um, anything like that. Um, but I, I've always found those to be not just really satisfying to write, but like uh, giving like a really positive contribution uh, creatively, because uh, you're writing about people who otherwise wouldn't wouldn't be celebrated. That's great. Everything you've described there is also mindfulness meditation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, working with with form um, and 
you know, I always say if, when you're working with formal poetry, you don't start with an idea. You start with a word and, and let the form draw the idea out of you, right? right. Uh, right. If, you, if you've written a bad son that you've hated, it's because you came out with, with a preconception of what you were going to write. And you just can't do that with form. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Oh, can, I, can I give a couple of examples? Yeah, please. Just like you did. So uh, I've written a couple of poems over the years. Um, one of my favorite ones that I've written uh, with the prompt I just gave you was uh, about my old uh, barber who actually cut my hair when I was little. Uh, and then I didn't go to him for a really long time, but I went back to him in my thirties. Uh, and then when, when I came back to him, he was on the verge of retiring. So I really wanted to write a poem to just kind of honor like his, his, his value to, to me personally. Um, and that's one of my favorite poems. Uh, the, another one is um, the last time I was in Hawaii, uh, there was a woman at one of the, um, um, uh, the gardens that I visited, uh, who uh, taught me a uh, Hawaiian dance, um, and I don't like dancing. Uh, and she somehow pulled out of me, like this this really uh, interesting like hand gesture dance. Um, and so, I, so you know, I wanted to write a poem about her as well. So yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah. And just and you did a whole you did a whole chat book on this woman you saw. Yeah, in Chicago. The, the the first of what I hope is many <laughs> chat books on on that kind of thing. So yeah. That's great. Um, okay. And, uh, and then you, you describe basically a, a walking meditation, one type of the walking meditation, mm. which is to go outside and see, re, re-experience the outside world without the idea of fear. We've got a couple of um, things in the chat. Uh, uh, Roberta talking about being outside by herself. I recall being uh, on roller skates in the street, watching my mother talk to a bunch of other women in the corner as dust turned to dark and being happy, she's there because of me. Didn't happen often. I was mostly ignored, right? And yeah, your jet lag plays, it's okay with the camera and the thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that, that's really great. Um, automatically acknowledge somebody. Yeah, and oh, did a writing your life workshop with Barbara Trapito. Uh, yeah, that's great. Um, uh, okay, yeah. And uh, an- another thing I do is I work a lot with the crisis. Um, let me let me type the, that word in the chat. Yeah. You want me to do it while you're talking? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, and a crisis is just writing about other forms of art, um, usually about painting. Uh, and if you, you if you know uh, Ode on a Grecian Urn, you, you know what I'm talking about. That's a crisis. He's uh, Keats is, is commenting on Urn. And what you're de- doing is taking that person's conversation about life or art or whatever that person is talking about and extending the conversation. Um, and saying, well, here, here's how I come at it. So I, I can do this with, with any number of things and everybody can. Uh, one of the things it's very easy to do is paintings. Uh, and so it, it's, it, it, it deepens your experience in a museum too. You go to the museum and then you start writing about these, these works of art. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely, it's fascinating. Uh, but you we, know, also have, uh, we also have two workshops this month on ecphrasis. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, one coming from a psychologist turned painter turned writer. Um, and who, who's the other? The crazy I think it's Scott. Oh, Scott. Yeah. Scott, Scott's really good at that. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, and, but it doesn't have to be that. Uh, I also like really bad television. So I've, I've done um, <laughs> poetry about Magnum PI, you know, um, the, the old Magnum, not the new Magnum. Uh, the new Magnum is not my Magnum. Um, I have done uh, poetry on, on, on music. Like, uh, I really love jazz and I think it's great. And I really am ashamed that I like heavy metal. I like the, the worse, the better uh, heavy metal, like from, from the eighties, the big hair bands. And so I'll, I'll write about them. Um, you know, whatever, whatever is, is interesting to you matters. And I, I think there's a reason it, it interests you and it can draw some stuff out. Again, it blocks these racing thoughts. Do you have another type of prompt, Lloyd? Um, no, I, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the nature walk thing that you were, that you just mentioned. I, I find with my, with my creative writing students, we're about to do this actually in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to go to a very specific part of campus. That's really beautiful nature wise. Uh, and they're going to spend, uh, really just the entire class period, uh, writing haiku. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Just being there, being in the moment, mm-hmm. not thinking about anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so yeah. That's great. And you, re- you reminded me of something I read just this morning. It was, um, I'm trying to find it. If I find it, I'll put it in the chat, but it's a woman who was writing about, you know, that show Guy Fieri, um, Diners, Drive-Ins, mm-hmm. Dives. Yeah. Right? So she 
wrote about how that was panned in the New York Times so badly, but how it kind of saved her life because it allowed her to just be this sloppy, greasy um, human being. And then she juxtaposed it also with um, escaping a horrible domestic violence mm. situation. Which, and it was just so wonderful. Oh, wow. Wow. That, that she's able to get that from Guy Fieri. I, I, I'm guessing he's not, that wasn't his intention, but what a, what a wonderful thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, uh, somebody has their hand up. Uh, Jane. Jane. Um, thank you for letting me come in light. I have wet hair and I'm, I'm here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually... Uh, I, I have been a visual and uh, a, a, a artist with words my whole life, but at one point about 15 years ago, I switched from primarily visual artist to writer. And uh, because to me, it's very much the same thing. I approach it the same way, I work it the same way. I happen to be working on a piece right now that I, I read at your studio, John, last spring at the... Oh giganto lot <laughs> there are so many of us there and um, uh, it started with my interest in Simonetta Vespucci and her uh, uh, basically um, uh, virtual presence in our culture for the last 600 years and so uh, I, I'm, I'm writing with uh, with Victoria Waddell's group. And I, I've written a couple of sections into it now. I, I don't think of it as ectophrasic. Is that the, the name uh, of art? Ectphrasis. Ectphrasis. I don't think of it that way, which is odd because I'm a visual artist as well. I just write this way. So, uh, and sometimes about characters out, out of art. So that, that's what I'm doing. And it's a big, uh, it, it's a big thing to get into. It, it's like all these parts trying to get them into one 10 pound bag. And uh, I will probably be wrestling with it for quite a while. So help is, help is uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you, you know, I think something like that is, is at once freeing and engaging. Right, because it frees you from from ego, but of course the ego is going to come back in um, as it as it should. Right, your your own personal narrative, your own your own life should should come back. Yeah. Um, but it, it's great that you're able to do that because then then you're you don't get stuck in uh, writing the exact same thing the exact same way. So. No, it's not fun that way. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting too. You're you're, you're a visual artist as well, doing a crisis. Um, and you're, you're going to understand the art in a way that like, I, I don't, I'm, 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 I have no visual ability or that's not growth mindset. Um, uh, I don't feel as though I have a lot of visual ability. Um, and, uh, I think well, good. You may just not have found it yet, but you know, the, the, the thing is that I, it, when I did not show the, the, iconic uh, artwork from the subject, people just didn't understand it. Who are these people? And why are we talking about Genoa and Botticelli? And it's like, so I realize now that, and I've been in, in, in poetry places where you were not allowed to give any clues at all other than the words in the poem, but it just doesn't work for me if I don't show them the big Venus on the half shell, Botticelli. Mm. And uh, I, I, the snake uh, in the Cosimo painting, the snake is becoming a character. And so I, I feel like I have to show them these images or they're just gonna be lost. So I'll see how other people feel about doing that. I do both actually, I love working in phrases. Um, and uh, I, 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 I'll write and just make enough reference so people understand it. And I, I also go with a publisher who's also a, a museum. I, I work with the Sassy Museum and I've got two or three books up there uh, that where you can, they're online books. You can look at the image and then, then the piece. Um, all of those, uh, I, I, I do that often when the artist isn't uh, famous yet. 
right? So that people don't have in their mind, you know, Nighthawks or something. Um, so, so yeah, I think I think both methods are, are fantastic. Um, Thank you. <laughs> right. I uh, should should we do? Would you like to do a prompt right now? A very quick prompt. <laughs> uh, so let's let's do this one. We'll, we'll just we'll type for about five six minutes just to get our juices flowing, and so. I, I've already given the prompt. I'd like you to uh, write about the first time you were outside by yourself. Um, and uh, the first, I'm not sorry, I said that wrong. The first time you can remember. So that could be when you were three, that could be when you were 48, doesn't matter, just that first one that comes up. Could have been this morning. Could have been this morning, yeah. <laughs> Renee, we're going to have just about five minutes.
Okay, just uh, finish up wherever you are. All right, um, so uh, uh, there's no way you could possibly be done uh, in that time, but uh, I hope that prompted the the the, the creative juices as, the, as it were. Um, does it, anybody have anything that he or she or they would like to share? Yeah. Um, I, I, I come from a big family, so, and we moved a lot. So, uh, actually I found it difficult to remember the first time I was outside on my own alone. Um, but it did prompt a memory of, um, losing a penny, which meant I didn't have enough to buy a particular comic and I was, I was walking through grass. So, you know, I can remember like getting everybody out of that stage, but I was out my own first looking for this penny so that I could make up the amount. Oh, so, wow. That's my gosh. When, when, when a penny really means something. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. That reminds me of um, a poet from, from, God, what, what, from Santa Cruz, California. Uh, he, he writes about being outside and he put his, his yellow sweater down, turned around, came back and it was gone and, he, and he, was, he was young enough that he thought this was proof that God didn't exist and he puts these things this, this is Gary Young it was an incredible so it's the worst thing that's ever happened to him right because it, it caused his first existential crisis right and it's a really major existential crisis um, and yeah that's that's powerful um, and I think Jane you had your hand up uh, you're, you're muted And the air was warm, but the worst of the heat <clears throat> had already burned off. My grandparents' backyard was my playground. I had dug for worms, made dollhouses, rescued doodle bugs, and adored kittens and horned toads and any animal that didn't, or any animal. I don't know what I did with that sentence. I had adored the horned toads. <laughs> this evening was different. My mother brought a, war a wash tub into the grass, pulled it over the green garden hose and filled it to the top. You can take your bath here tonight, she said. My heart leaped with surprise. Would I be seen by the drivers on the street that ran beside the yard? Who cares, my mother said without speaking. And I followed her lead. I bathed outdoors for the first time that evening. And I've always given my children the same thrill I had that summer night. Mm -hmm. that's wonderful. That's great. Um, that, uh, that, that's, that's, that's really wonderful. That, that's, that's, a, that's a fascinating fascinating piece. What an interesting memory to come up to. Uh, and we we're talking about Lloyd's was happy, mine was anxiety written. Your, yours is just, I don't know, different. It's a new experience kind of thing. So that's great. Thank uh, you. Anybody, Thank you. anybody else have, have one? Looks like Sue. Oh yeah, Sue. I don't know what I'm supposed to have. I was just going to tell you that um, um, when I did the uh, writing your life with Barbara Trapedo, she got us to start by drawing a picture of a place that we, the, the, the first place we actually remembered as a child. Mm. Um, mm. She talked about around about six years old and we started with that place and then we filled in the detail with our writing. So we then started to come in or out, depending on whether it was an outside place or an inside place. And I took my mother with me to this um, writing workshop. And my mother was just turning 80. And she wrote about a time when she was at school as a small child. And she said, <laughs> And she was picked out as a person to read from her writing. Wow. And she whispered to me, 
I can't read it, Susan. I can't read it. I said, why not? She said, it's got a naughty word in it. <laughs> so I said, for God's sake, mother, read it. And so she read this story about when she was at school and the, the toilets were outside in a block. And she was wearing a red knitted, hand knitted jumper, she called it, so a sweater. And she could remember, started to remember the detail of the stitching, which she'd never thought about in all those years. She started to remember the detail of the stitching, but worse than that, she remembered this little boy who actually peed up her jumper. <laughs> and it was the trouble she got into as a result of that. Oh. And this is why she didn't want to read the story because she said, he wee weed up my jumper. <laughs> right. Um, and, and the memories didn't come back to her until we started with that basic outline, which we actually drew on a piece of paper. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it all started coming back to her just based on that drawing and putting herself in that place. She remembered his name. She remembered what he looked like. And she'd never thought about him in what? 73 years, 76, 74 years, something like that. She'd never thought about that incident since then. And when you start to build, the, the older you get, the sharper those old memories become, um, I'm finding anyway. Um, so, so it was the first time she'd ever been to an event like that ever. Um, she'd never written. She never did write. I mean, she's in the nursing home now, she's 98. But, but it was observing the way that she built up this picture just starting with that basic outline. Okay, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, very, very similar to what we're, we're, what we're doing here. That, that's that's great. Um, and uh, um, yeah, it absolutely, absolutely works. Going to, into those deep memories in your life, you can, those those memories are always important to us. And I think even though they're individual, they're, they're universal too, right? I mean, I've never had anybody pee on my jumper, um, but I can I can feel, feel that. I understand what that's like. Um, or I guess wee wee on my jumper. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, do, does anybody have uh, another to share? No? Okay. Well, that's good. This is a good time to break. And I see that Jude just uh, just came on. And hi, Jude. Hello. Uh, we continue our, our theme of internationalness. Uh, we, we, we're out all the way to, to, to England now. Um, or, or are you in Wales? No, I'm, I'm near Bristol and Bath in, in the, the southwest. That's right. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, why don't we take a break uh, and then we'll come back in about uh, seven minutes to, with, our first, with our first session. <laughs> 